Okay, in this video we're going to take you through the fixed asset item list. Now, of course, if you're an enterprise uh, or some accountant's additions, depending on the year, uh, you can uh, have access to this list. Um, we're not talking about going in and managing fixed assets, right? Using the fixed asset manager right now. We're just talking about the list. Okay, now the difference here is the fixed asset manager does full depreciation calculations for you. Or, well, you have to set it up, obviously, but once you have it set up, it does those depreciation calculations for you on your different depreciation methods that you're using. This fixed asset items list is kind of like where we can keep track of our fixed asset items, when we bought them, how much they cost, etc separate from our actual items list. So we have customers, let's say, who buy machines, right? So let's say they buy, I don't know, tractors. And they have several different tractors that they purchase. Instead of adding that to our items list, right, for all the different tractors that they purchase, then we'll set it up on the fixed asset item list because they still need the item created, right, because I have to be able to pull it onto a PO. And in order for it to be a PO, a PO to be created, I have to have an item. So notice that fixed asset items can actually be added to POs as well. So it keeps it separate, right, from our list of items we sell necessarily, right? So it's not on our items list, but our fixed asset items list is there as well. So how do we set up a new fixed asset item? So we come in here, we say new item, we give it a name, okay? Um, so we're gonna call this a tractor. Um, we can say if it's new or used when we purchased it. Again, this is just information for us to keep track of so that when we go back and we look at this five years later and we go, hey, that tractor we bought back in 2016, right? This is information for us. Now, the purchase description is a really important field because when you do, if you do decide to use a fixed asset manager, it doesn't pull the asset name, it pulls the purchase description. So you wanna make sure that the purchase description is very unique, right? You don't wanna just say laptop, laptop, laptop. You wanna say, you know, MacBook Air, whatever, blah, 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 okay? So the purchase description is very important. Okay, and then we can put in here the date that it was purchased, the original cost that we paid for it. Now, of course, again, the cost field that we put in here is gonna be a default when we fill out the PO, but if the price changes, right, you want the actual price to show up on the PO. The vendor information, the asset description is down here, right, so you can put in some asset information, location where you're keeping it, PO number, serial number, warranty expires notes. Now, setting this up on the list here does not create the PO for me automatically. I still have to go create the PO, but again, it's just inf it's list information, right? So I don't know, at the end of the year, we're providing to our CPA uh, or our EA what assets we purchased this year. It's a lot more information, the information that they need to be able to if they're keeping track of our depreciation for us, okay? More information you put in the system, what more we can pull out, right? Then we wanna say what asset account we're gonna be posting it to, so which fixed asset account, so probably this would be I don't know, machinery, equipment, sales description. Then when we sell the item, if we sell the item, we can also say this item is being sold, the sale date, the, the price, and the ex, um, sales expense, right? So um, any expenses that are allocated there. We can have custom fields set up in here as well. So again, when I set it up on the fixed asset items list, that doesn't mean that I actually have it. Right? It's not going to go in and stick this in. So if I create this, the cost is $500 and, or let's make it a big cost, $50,000. And um, it's put to machinery and equipment. So if I go look at machinery and equipment right now, right, it has $25,000 in there. So when I say, okay here, well, let me put in um, on your tractor. And then okay. Oh, it has to have a purchase date, that's right. Um, so today. Oh, it's already in use, <laughs> so tractor, whatever it is. Okay, so now I have the tractor in there, so you notice that it doesn't go in and actually receive in that item for me, right? I still have to go into the purchase order, enter that I'm purchasing a tractor, I still have to receive the tractor in and pay for it. That's when it actually comes in as 
you know, affecting my financials. So setting it up on the list does not affect the financials. But again, it allows us to have and keep track of this information inside of QuickBooks so it makes it a lot easier for reporting at year end, for doing, I don't know, our uh, business property re returns, all that kind of stuff. Um, notice also that you can attach documents in here. So if we do have any kind of purchase agreement or maybe, I don't know, with a laptop comes some kind of a warranty agreement, you can attach those documents in here as well. Now, of course, the same goes on the flip side, right? So just because I come in here and mark this as sold and I have a sales date and a sales price, right? Just because I enter that in there does not mean that the asset is now out, off of my books. I still have to have a transaction that shows that I've sold this asset and you know usually there's some kind of gain or loss on uh, the change right so I sold I bought it for 50 I sold it for 45 I haven't had any depreciation yet so we had a loss of five thousand dollars on the sale of my fixed asset um, and now obviously if I'm selling it within a couple days of purchasing it, it probably isn't a fixed asset right that might be some kind of line of business that I'm doing so you want to be aware of that as well all right that's a fixed asset item list